Our final speaker for today is Mrs. Sami Shafkat Kuresi, who is an experienced school leader and an educationist. She started her career as an English language teacher and has 24 years of diversified work experience in various teaching and leadership positions. Semi is the principal at Bacon House Valencia campus in Lahore, Pakistan, and this year marks her eighth year in educational leadership. As an educationist, she believes in lifelong learning and a philosophy is currently studying towards her MPhil on educational leadership and management. Kindly note that we will be taking questions at the end of all the sessions. So please put your questions on the chat box and name the presenters to whom you would like to put forward your questions. Now I would like to hand over the platform to Mrs. Humphreys. Namaste everybody and thank you very much for welcoming me to your uh, symposium today and greetings from the United Kingdom. Uh, we're all in this together and it's been a global challenge for all of us. Uh, I talk about to my team about having brave leadership because these are the times where we all need to work together um, to help our communities um, deal with the situation we're in on a day-by-day -day basis and that's really what I'll be talking about today. I think in this situation relationships are key and relationships with our friends, our families and our uh, pupils and our staff um, and that's what we really work hard with um, at the Lees. The Lees is quite a big school in the UK. We have 460 pupils here and I have 90 staff um, to manage so communication is a big issue. So if I could have the next slide please. The one thing that I would say from February is that we need as leaders to be well informed and you are all part of that. On a global scale and on a local platform, we're always listening to what's going on in the local community and as well as the national platform and communication is part of that. What I feel the most important job that I have had to do as the leader and all my um, colleagues in my town is, is really look at everything that's going on daily and keeping good communication. And I do that with all the local head teachers um, in, in the local town of Stevenage where we work. The other third point is about well-being because we know to get through all of this as a community, we need to focus on our, our own well-being, uh, the well-being of our team, of our pupils and our families. And that's one of the things that guides me all the way through this is, is how people are and what we can do to support them. Um, on, and this has been on several different levels while we've been in lockdown and um, during the time we've been back in school. It's all about people feeling confident and secure in what we have to offer as a school and we've worked really hard on that communication. Next slide. So as I said about keeping in contact with local um, government guidance and I even take um, note of what people are saying in the news. And I acted very quickly offering protective equipment to my staff even before it came out in the guidance because I was listening to what the scientists were saying. So I think it's really important to keep an open mind and make sure that you're making decisions for your community as quickly as possible because of what I wanted is my staff to feel safe and secure coming in to support our children, even during lockdown when we're coming in to support our key worker children. And they did feel secure because we did um, keep close eye on them. I also kept in close contact with what other schools were doing locally, what other schools were doing nationally. And I also talked to um, other team leaders. We met weekly, even on, on lockdown and even more often sometimes to discuss the guidance and how we're gonna apply it to our own setting. And there's always differences between schools. I would say the one thing that we did very effectively is we did act quickly. At every time that we were concerned about a member of our community, we would give advice, we would be on hand, I would talk to parents from home. Um, we did everything we could to keep that communication, even under the, the difficult circumstances of being in lockdown um, and updating the staff in lots of different ways, which I'll talk about in a minute. Next slide, please. I used a range of technology for, my, for the families and our staff. And that is letters, Facebook, we've got text, we've got Google Classroom, we had the YouTube channel. Um, I send out weekly updates. Um, we had Zoom meetings for all our teams. All our teams also had WhatsApp groups. Um, 
I kept in close communication with my staff, um, even though we are a big staff, because they were all coming in to support our, our children in, in school. And I think for us, it's a big ask, but it's really being in touch with what's going on within the, in the school community. So I had close communication with all my team leaders because my school is, is in seven large teams. Next slide. The one big factor that's been a huge responsibility is assessing the risks and, pro and providing a risk assessment for when we all came back to school. We came back to school on the 1st of June and again in September. And when we came back on the 1st of June, we came back in small groups of 15. And then when we came back in September, we we're all back. So each time I've had to write a risk assessment, looking at the hazards, um, the local health and safety team provide um, guidance on how to um, provide those um, that risk assessment. But really the decisions are basically ours on in school. It is really important that I rely on the decisions we make in school and providing that guidance to all my staff to make sure that we've assessed all the risks. That is about social distancing. That is about um, all of my medical um, staff and pupils who have medical um, issues. So we had to make sure we had risk assessments for children and adults to make sure that they were safe to come back to school. There were lots of details to look into, how we use the toilets, how we're gonna stay in pods, the one-way system around the school, um, was really important to help um, people so, uh, uh, social distance. And recently I bought in masks. So now every member of our, our families have to wear a mask coming onto the school site and into if they come into the school building. But we're very careful about visitors who come into school still at the moment. We're, what we're trying to do is only essential visitors because we want to reduce the risks as much as possible. So every decision we make in terms of the risk assessment is about reducing the risks are as, as, as much as possible to make sure our families feel confident about bringing the children into school. And the great news about that is I've had 95% um, plus attendance um, and really some of those pe the attendance that um, the children who aren't here is because we've asked them to stay at home because they might be poorly or they might be self-isolating or they might be waiting for a test. So I'm really pleased that we must have really secured the confidence of our families because they're all they've all come back they're all happy and so are our staff so that's good news uh, the next slide please so we are very careful we keep to the government guidance we've uh, enhanced the cleaning i've paid extra money to ensure the cleaning of our school is is, is a, a much more um, enhancing um we ensure um, all our per persons on, on site have all those uh, practices you'll know very well about regular hand washing, using a sanitizer. Um, we have phrases we use in school in the UK, catch it, bin it, kill it, in terms of use of tissues. We are using every means we can to make sure all our members of our community, children, adults and families, are using the same procedures um, in school and at home. So it, it's about good practice. And these are all the practice you'll know um, very well, even in your own countries. Next slide, please. I talked about well-being. Now, one of the first things we had to, um, yeah. was making sure our families had food. And that was we provide uh, food, about, um, about food and school for our families. So straight away, we offered uh, um, packed lunches and very soon the yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was a big um, job for our administration team to make sure all the families had been safe and able to uh, um, uh, buy and uh, use their food vouchers in the local supermarkets. Um, I was very concerned about that because as you know in all our communities we have lots of people who've lost jobs, um, they don't have the access to um, a, a salary, um, a lot of our families were furloughed. Oh. Um, food um, was a big issue in our community anyway. So the, my admin team worked really hard on that. We've also been communicating Hello. with our families, keeping our mental health. When we're in lockdown, we, we wanted to speak to our children. We used to I'm um, sorry, Lee. Um, your mic is also unmuted right now. 
Uh, I would also request all the participants to kindly mute your microphones. Have you heard what I've said so far? Yes, now we can hear you. Please continue. Okay. So I was talking about um, the food, uh, making sure all our families had access to food uh, for our disadvantaged families. Um, we've also been raising awareness uh, for uh, positive mental health for our children while they're on lockdown and since they've returned to school, because we know if our children feel safe and secure that they will um, be able to return to learning. And we've been very pleased that the learning has started very much straight away and we're already working on what we call the recovery curriculum with uh, our children. While in lockdown, we used uh, Google Meet, so children were um, accessing our teachers um, through Google Meet. They had access to work in, in um, Google Classroom, but also they had packs of work because some of our families did not have access to uh, a, a, a computer. So they um, had paper uh, books that they work in, and we, we provided those packs and they collected them from school. Now that we're back in school, we're offering lots of um, time for the children to talk and play. Mm -hmm. We're spending a lot of time outside because we know the outdoor curriculum is really important for them. And we've also been really um, creative in the way we've engaged our pupils uh, back in school, allowing them lots of time to have fun. We've just had a well-being week last week where they took part in a, a, a whole lot of outdoor activities. I'm very lucky in the UK. I've got a large site so the children can spread out. We've got lots of playground. I've got a wild flower meadow and lots of space for children to play in the playground. Next slide. So one of the things that we've done and been very, um, very um, secure on is providing the PPE equipment. And that's for anybody who wants to use it. We all use masks now. And when, when staff are outside their groups, and in particular, we're concerned, as I said, about our, our staff who are medically vulnerable and our children. All those risk assessments are, uh, agreed with the staff. And all my staff came back, I have to say. So that was fantastic that we worked hard before we came back to speak to those uh, members of staff and the, ch and the children to make sure they felt secure about coming back. Um, all the leadership team were involved in all of the um, the guidance we put in place. So I've had lots of uh, members of my team working hard behind the scenes to prepare for the return to school. So as I said, we're, the schools worked hard to reduce the contact, the potential spread of the virus. Next slide, please. What we're really doing is we talked uh, about when we came back and June is having a smiling curriculum. So we wanted the children to know that we were, you know, be happy and positive. We know this has such an impact on the children coming back. They were so delighted to be back. And so we, uh, we were to see them as well because we were so concerned about them over lockdown. We have worked really hard to build cohesive teams in school and, you know, keep in contact with each other and communicate responsibilities. I send out updates uh, regularly so, and guidance as well as a risk assessment so everybody in our community um, as well as parents know uh, what is going on and what to do um, if, there's, if they're concerned about family health symptoms. We've adapted our school arrangements to ensure the staff feel safe. Um, we provide, provide a train, um, online training and we've had some face-to-face -face training, social distanced. Uh, to make sure that uh, the staff feel comfortable. Um, I would say that one of the most important things we have done in our school is listen. We're listening to staff, we're listening to parents, we're listening to pupils and making sure that we're adjusting the day or adjusting what we're offering in accordance to uh, what we can um, make adaptions for um, that make for that would be reasonable for, the, for everybody um, in the school. Next slide, please. So before I finish, I would just say that the one thing um, we've used a lot is what we call the recovery curriculum. That's been about addressing children's gaps when they come back, but also focusing on their well-being. It's also about addressing all of the issues they've had during lockdown. And, you know, at, in school now, we do a lot more personal um, education um, at, at the present. But at the same time, the, the teachers are very much back into the learning 
and making sure we're addressing the gaps in the learning and we're working hard with parents because we're now preparing for what we call pod closures. So at the moment, the teacher's all preparing their Google Classroom, mm -hmm. um, their packs for work, because what's gonna happen over here is if we have a positive case, we could have a pod closure instead of a school closure. So that would mean might, might be you know 70 pupils and the staff involved have to self isolate for, for 14 days. So we're into a new phase in the UK. A, a new app's just been launched in the UK and we're trying to work out how that's going to affect us in school. We're you know, obviously working hard with the test and trace system in the UK. So it is still very much today um, a changing picture. And it's about us in school to um, address that and act very quickly, as I said. So thank you very much for your time. And I'm more than happy to take any questions at the end of the session. Thank you, Lee. Um, thank you for uh, sharing um, best practices that you've done in the UK. Uh, the next presentation is from uh, Mr. Tanka Prasad Dahal, who is the headmaster of Monthly Secondary School. I would like to invite Tanka, sir. Uh, Namaste. Sir, please. Go ahead. Namaste to all. Uh, I'm Tanka Prasad Dahal from Monthly Secondary Namaste. School, Ramachab, Nepal. So, uh, so I would like to continue my uh, presentation first. So monthly school is running different programs from ECD to grade 12. Then it has technical program also, and it has a uh, school for differently abled children and other different 19 programs we have. And we have altogether 2,072 students and uh, the number of girls is uh, higher in our school. and. Uh, uh, the Dalit the students, 267 students, they study in our school and ethnic group uh, students. Uh, majority of them, 800 students of the, uh, from the group and other marginal like Mazi, Ayu, uh, 142 students and differently able the students, 29 students, they study in our school and we have 73 staff. Mm -hmm. Next. So generally, uh, so what we faced uh, during the earthquake 2015, uh, it is uh, uh, very striking for us. So the first feeling, uh, uh, we were in the school at that time, the first, first feeling uh, we felt was we all finished. Um, our family is also finished. Our school is also finished. We felt at that time, but uh, after some time, uh, we saw their land parted and but filled after some minutes, then later. We felt it, it is a, a natural disaster. Earthquake is a natural disaster. Uh, then after some days, uh, we were thinking how to run the school. Then, uh, so uh, resuming school operations after the crisis, uh, we discussed in our school management committee and uh, district education office at that time. And within one month, we resumed our school. Uh, then we made a kind of guideline to uh, um, follow in that situation, uh, how to handle the situation. So we followed that guideline and uh, immediately uh, to run the classes, uh, we constructed uh, three temporary learning centers, TLC, we say, for secure classrooms because the students uh, uh, hesitated to join the classes in the big buildings. Uh, so we did not use those buildings and the toilets with the red sticker at that time. And we also constructed temporary toilets for the students too. And then next. So we, uh, we mobilized our scout troop because we have more than 300 students in our scout troop in our school. Then we have also a junior Red Cross circle of the students and child club also. So we uh, uh, took the help of these uh, students uh, groups uh, to collect bamboos and other materials for TLC and uh, our parents also helped us at that time to uh, cope with the uh, 
disaster at that time. So we also visited uh, other more affected schools uh, by earthquake and collected best practices of, of safety and uh, also uh, ways of teaching learning how they are running and we uh, also implemented in our school at that time. Uh, then at that time we preferred participatory work, working together with the staff, working together with the parents, school management committee and uh, uh, parents teachers association. We have different committees in our school. Uh, so we did in that way, all in participatory way. Uh, next. So the measures we uh, took uh, after the disaster is, uh, one is risk reduction management map. We prepared it and uh, we prepared the policy of our school, how to cope with the situation. Then uh, development of class-wise IT friendly notice system, because we faced that uh, if we manage the uh, notices timely, uh, in the proper classes, then uh, we can provide information to the students immediately. Then uh, conduction of earthquake awareness program to the teachers first. So uh, we collected all the teachers. Uh, then uh, we took the help of the district disaster management committee and uh, other trainers and to train the teachers first, then the students, and then uh, how to uh, cope with the situation. So there is the uh, awareness program we conducted. Then we also conducted training programs uh, related to psychology and self-confidence building because at that time, uh, most of the people are operated in themselves. So that how we can increase self-confidence and psychologically how we can treat our students and staff uh, to be stronger at that situation to go together, so we did that. Then we also have discussion about the types of natural disasters they may occur in monthly valley because uh, other disasters like flood, landslide, uh, then forest fire, uh, these can occur in our monthly area, Ramesab district of Nepal, so that we also discuss about those types of disasters and how to cope with the, uh, them. Then different ways to survive from those natural disasters. So how we can survive in that situation? So we also organized uh, awareness programs, class-wise awareness programs to the students. Then we also invited a school management committee, then parent teachers association and our staffs and parents also in class-wise way because we have more than 2000 parents also so uh, in class wise order we uh, called them in our school and we discussed about the situation and we also counseled them parenting education because if parents are educated and they also help their uh, children uh, how to cope with the situation so we did that uh, then next slide uh, similarly uh, we also uh, learned that Open fields are better safe than under the bed or table at the time of earthquake. So in the beginning, the students, uh, we also only knew that uh, the under the bed or under the table uh, is the safer one. But after the disaster, we learned that open fields are better. So uh, around the school also, we need a big area of playground or open field to make our students safe. So similarly, uh, we also organized a demo, demo program of di disaster management in collaboration with our scout, uh, then, uh, and uh, Nepal army also, uh, because uh, in monthly we organized that uh, in collaboration with the scout team and Nepal army and there was a demo and we also uh, took part there and our students also play the role uh, in the demo. So it is also, uh, helpful. It became helpful for our students and uh, community of monthly also. Then next is psychological counseling training to the teachers and students. So at that time, uh, 
the students need uh, more uh, uh, strength uh, for their uh, uh, situational help. So that we organized uh, this kind of training to the teachers first and the teachers uh, class-wise provided training to the students. Then we continued our parenting education to cope with the disaster uh, class-wise. Uh, then uh, we also organized joint work with the school and community because in this situation, if we are near to the community and we can get more help, and uh, in construction of TLC also, in other situation also, and if we are near to the uh, community people and uh, our parents, we can do many more things. So we also uh, did that. The next. Uh, so uh, in this way, uh, we uh, tried to run our school immediately after the disaster. So uh, in this situation, uh, so what we extracted is uh, our school leaders should have quick decision power. So e theoretically, we can say uh, uh, transformational leadership uh, will be better at this time. We, we felt that then transactional and sometimes charismatic leadership also uh, worked at that time. It is our experience. Then uh, we need a skill to mobilize manpower immediately because uh, at the time of disaster, uh, we don't have much more time to take decision. So that uh, 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 we should have the skill to mobilize manpower immediately. Then next one is we should be cooperative and uh, uh, participatory. So these two ways of leadership is preferred uh, at that time. Uh, then continuity of awareness program related to disaster management because disaster, a different kind of disaster can uh, come in our life. So we should continue uh, for this. So now we are facing another disaster, a kind of uh, a pandemic. So we have to continue this kind of awareness again, then provide the stakeholders feeling of more security. So we felt that if we provide our parents, uh, our other stakeholders, that we are uh, secure in our school, premises, then the children come regularly and enjoy the school activities easily. And then another is confidence building power is increased. So when we work together at the time of crisis, we have more confidence that we can manage other crises also. Uh, so uh, we have experienced from monthly school side. So I hope we will also learn much more from other schools and uh, uh, there are uh, next slide. Uh, there are some photos of our school. Uh, so next then. So it is main uh, school building, and there are some activities we did in our school. Uh, then next, uh, it is ECD class. Uh, we have uh, preparing in this way. Uh, so at the time of disaster, we have collected bamboos with the help of Nepal army like this, and they assisted us a lot at that time. Next. Uh, so the students also helped us. They also worked us together to uh, construct the TLC. Uh, so in this way, uh, monthly school has uh, um, practiced uh, team leadership, we can say teamwork, collaboration with the community and other stakeholders and uh, different uh, government and uh, non-government uh, sides we took help together and uh, uh, we were able to cope with the disaster of earthquake at that time. So the confidence we built from that disaster is that if uh, there are other situations we are facing, like in this pandemic also, we have been uh, running our school in different 14 learning centers in uh, alternative uh, learning ways. We have also run online and offline mode of learning uh, situations uh, to the students and uh, our full team, 73 teachers team is working now in our school. Uh, 
So in different uh, ways of uh, government's guidelines, we are implementing our uh, formal education uh, system in alternative way. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Tanka sir. Um, that was uh, very, very uh, delightful to see. Um, clearly, it shows like a lot of beautiful measures taken in place to handle uh, 2015's uh, earthquake crisis. Um, before we move on, I would like to request participants to kindly put on your questions uh, on the chat box. You can also name to whom do you want to put forward the questions to. Um, next, I would like to invite Mrs. Semi Shafkat Kuresi, who is the principal at Bacon House Valencia campus in Pakistan. Yes, hello everyone. It's a pleasure to be here to talk to all the diverse audience here. I'll be talking about the leader's role in crisis management in times of political unrest. Political unrest is a component that affects school globally and it's not limited to a particular city or country. At times, political unrest can be predicted and school leaders can define reactionary policies to ensure student safety. However, most time political crisis builds up unexpectedly. In either situation, schools are often the first to be closed down and the last to be resumed. In all such circumstances, um, school leaders play a key role. Uh, can we have the next?